Hi, nice to meet you. My name's Steve Butler, and I'm a mathematician, which means that I spend a lot of time doing math. A lot of it is teaching, but also in discovering, because there's a lot of math to discover, and also a lot of ways to find mathematics showing up in unusual places. We're going to see that today, because today we're going to be talking about mathematics and juggling. And in particular, say, hey, what can we say about math and juggling? Is there a connection? What is it? And does math benefit from juggling? And does juggling benefit from math? Well, we may not answer all those questions, but at least we're going to have a ball, right? So first off, why should we think that there should be a connection between math and juggling? Well, if you think about what juggling is, juggling is about patterns. There's lots of different patterns that we have. Now, mathematics is built to study patterns. And therefore, when we think about it, it's like, okay, great, let's take our tools of mathematics, our tools to help us understand patterns, and let's use them to find patterns in juggling, to develop new patterns, patterns that have never been juggled before. Well, how do we do that? So let's talk about ways to think about juggling. Now, a lot of people learn when they start juggling what I've been doing so far. This is called the three ball cascade, and it's one pattern. And it's a, a fairly simple one to learn. In some sense, the balls are making something that looks a little bit like a figure eight as you go from hand to hand. Of course, that's not the only pattern. There's this pattern as well. This is called the three ball shower, where you can see it's a little different. Whereas in the previous one, it was very consistent. The left and the right were doing something very similar. Now you see, wait, one hand is throwing very high and the other is very low. All right, different. So we know there are different patterns. So we say, okay, how do we start to understand them? Well, one thing we can do is look at what we call juggling diagrams. How do you find them? Well, you can imagine, you know, turning sideways and you juggle while you walk. Now it's not so unusual for people when they start learning to juggle to throw the balls a little bit in front of them and then they start chasing. Well, that's not juggling, that's joggling. That's a little different. But anyways, you just turn and you start moving forward. Great. And what you can do is you can keep track of what are the balls doing up in the air. So let's see what happens if we were to do that with the patterns that we've been talking about so far. So here we go. So here is the pattern that we just start set, that three ball cascade. You'll notice that you have different tracks here representing the different balls. It's very similar. Each ball is more or less doing the same thing. Each throw looks like every other throw. The only question is which direction are you going? And now we say, okay, oh great, it's a pretty picture, but what can we do? Well, if we're doing math, what's our tendency? It's like, oh, numbers, let's throw numbers at this. And so what numbers can we think of? Well, one thing we can do is code how far we throw it right? Because there are different types of throws. You can imagine a very quick throw versus a very slow throw. And what's the difference? Well, it's a matter of, you know, how soon until the ball arrives. So we can say every throw gets attached to a number. And that number is how many beats in the future will you land? So we can do some easy computations. We just say, okay, let's suppose we start here. We say, all right, how many beats until that ball lands? One, two, three. So we say, okay, that's three beats in the future. And this one, one, two, three. Oh, okay. How about this one? One, two, three. And in fact, what happens is every single throw is going to be a three. So it's three, 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 three. So the three ball cascade is composed of just the same consistent throw where a throw will land three beats in the future from where you started. All right, great. So you say, aha, this is the pattern three. Okay, good. We'll just make some notes here. So this is three. Now, there's another pattern which we talked about, which is that shower. Remember, that's the one where we had the balls going high in one hand and low in the other. So you can see it sort of alternates high, low, high, low, high, low. Or you can think of it as, you know, high, quick, high, quick. All right, well, what's happening there? Well, let's take a look. What do we see? Well, we have a really long throw, so that's one, two, three, four, five. 
So that's five beats in the future. And then we have one. See, that's the high, and then quick or low. And then the next one, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, great. And the next one, one. And the next one, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then one. And that pattern actually continues. It's five, one, five, one, five, one, all the way across. And so we can describe this in shorthand as saying, all right, this is the pattern five, one. Now, when I say 5-1, it doesn't mean just a 5 and a 1. It says, okay, 5-1, and then repeat. 5-1, 5-1, 5-1, 5-1, 5-1. So it's this beautiful shorthand. So now we have this nice way to start describing things. Today we have this pattern of 3, and we have this pattern of 5-1. And now there's this another pattern right here, a little different. We haven't juggled that one yet. What is this one? Well, this is called the baby juggling pattern. And you might think, ooh, we're going to juggle kids. Well... Kind of. It actually uh, kind of evolved in a manner of uh, people who would perform. And of course, jugglers perform with all kinds of objects. If they have kids, it's like, okay, how do we get our kids involved? So what they would do is they put their kid in one arm, two balls in the other, and they throw the two balls up really high. And when the ball is up in the air, do a quick change so that the balls could come down. And they would come down and they throw the balls back up high and they do a quick change and so forth and so on. Now, I'm not going to demonstrate this with a real baby. Uh, for several reasons. First off, I don't happen to have one available, which is a good reason why I'm not going to do it. Uh, but second off, well, you need a little bit more practice. So what I'll do is we'll just do it with, with some normal balls here. So we'll have one ball. Let's say this is our low ball. This is what can represent the baby. That always stays low. So it'll be high, high, low, high. Ah! See, that? that's why you don't do it with a real baby. So, whoops, boom, boom, choo. Something like that. Okay. All right. Now, this ball, what happened? Well, it was either staying in the hand or going across. So we have the ones are going across. Actually, the other times it was staying, it was doing what's called a two. So two, you might think, should look like this because it comes back to the hand after two beats. But because it comes right back, oftentimes we just hold it. So this would be two. And uh, all right, great. Easy. You know, if you ever ask, hey, can you juggle? You say, yeah, look, this is the pattern too. Look at me, I'm juggling, I'm juggling, I'm a juggler. So you too can juggle. All right, good, good. So, well, what's happening here? Well, we can keep track. So there's a pattern here, one beat. Then we have two beats in the future. We have one, two, three, four, five beats in the future. And then here we have, uh, two beats in the future, and this one is one, two, three, four, five, and a one, a two, a five, a two, a five, and so forth and so on. And, uh, well, we can describe this pattern, and what is it? Well, we really say, how long does it take to repeat? And it turns out it repeats every five beats. So this can be the pattern one, two, five, two, five. There we go. And now, Every single pattern actually has this beautiful notation. Now, what is this? What is it called? And what we're seeing here, these are what are called sight swaps. Now, a sight swap is really saying, let's keep track of the throw that we're making right now. Okay, so we have a ball. What do we do with it? In some sense, it's really an elegant idea. It says, hey, you've got a ball coming in. You better do something with it. What do you do? So that's the idea of sight swap. What to do with the ball right now. Now, this is a beautiful way to describe patterns, but maybe not the best way to find patterns. So we're gonna look at a different way to describe juggling. Now you might say, well, why do we need a different way? Isn't one way sufficient? But there's this beautiful idea that says, hey, if I have more than one way to describe an object, I have more power, especially when I think about ways I can combine the different descriptors. So it's perfectly fine to say, hey, I want to think about what's happening in a slightly different perspective. So what's our new perspective? So Sideswap says, let's look at 
what I need to do with the ball right now. So what we're going to do instead is to say, hey, let's keep track of the balls and how soon they're scheduled to land. Now, what does that mean? Well, imagine that you have some balls and then you're, you're juggling. And then you're like, ah, oh, I'm bored. I don't want to do this anymore. I give up. And what happens? Well, you stopped, right? And, and there was some thud, thud, thud. Now, you can actually listen and hear the balls hit the ground. Now, they could do things like boom, boom, boom. Hit one right after another. But you can imagine that maybe you did some high throws. So it was like boom, boom, pause, pause, boom. Or it could be really dramatic. Boom, pause, pause, boom, pause, pause, boom. It just depends on how high you throw the balls. So we're going to keep track of the information about, well, okay, how soon until the balls will land again. So let's look at, in particular, let's follow this pattern down here at the bottom. So imagine that we were going to stop juggling right here. So in other words, we've been juggling, we've been juggling, we've juggling, like, ah, okay, that's it, we're done. So where do the balls land? Well, the, our pink one will land there. So I'm going to mark a one for saying something lands. And then uh, our sort of yellowish one. And then our bluish one there. So I'm going to put a zero. So a one says, aha, something hit. Zero says nothing landed. So this is a boom, boom, pa, boom. That's what we would hear if we stopped right at that moment. All right, great. But we don't have to stop right at that moment. We could stop one beat later. And what happens? Well, so if we had stopped one beat later, what would happen is, well, we follow where do our balls end. So the yellow one comes down and, and still there at one. Our blue one still lands there. And our pink one now lands way over here. So one, zero, one, zero, one. Okay, so that's fine. We hear the boom, pa, boom, pa, boom. All right, well, we keep going. What if we had chosen to stop here? Well, what do you see? We have our, our yellow one lands really quickly, our blue one, and then our pink one. One, one, zero, one. Okay, huh, well, we've seen that before, right? One, one, zero, one, 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 zero, one. And, uh, well, all right. Because it repeats every five times, we should do at least five steps. Okay, and now what do we have? Well, our blue one still lands, and then here's our yellow one, and then there's our pink one. Aha! One, one, one. This is our boom, boom, boom. Right away. Do, do, do. Great. Okay, and one more, right? So if we do one more, what do we have? Well, we have, and now our figure is getting really convoluted here, but we'll clean it up in just a second here. Well, we're going to land our yellow, our pink, and then, oh, look, dramatic pause. There's going to be way the way out there. One, one, zero, zero, one. All right. Now, because this is a pattern that repeats every five beats, then we can stop here because we say, look, every five, whatever the pattern is in terms of when the balls land, it's going to get back to where we started. So it's okay if we just say, what's happening? Well, our states, we're going through five different configurations. So we start off at 1101, one, one, and then we go to 10101, one, one, which then goes to 1101, one, one, which then moves over to 111, and that goes to 1101, uh, one, 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 which finally goes back up to 1101. One, one. And there we go. That tells us everything about what's happening at any particular moment. But we actually have a little bit more. There's a couple of fun things to notice here. If we know our states, then what we can do is we can say, all right, let's see what happened. You know, what was our behavior at a certain time? Well, what do I mean by that? So remember, we, we had this idea of, of side swap. What do you do with the ball right now? In other words, how should you throw the ball in your hand? Well, if we have our information about the states, now remember our states is when are the balls landing, then we can see that the transition from one state to another, well, that corresponded to an action. You, you threw a ball. We can talk about what kind of throw we made. 
So how do we figure that out? Well, let's just uh, pick one of our transitions. So let's do our first transition. So we were at the state 1101, and then we moved to the state 10101. Now, what's happening here? How do we think about this? Now, the way uh, I like to think about this is to say, look, time is moving forward, right? And so what's going to happen is that this one here, that says, hey, a ball is landing. We've got to do something with it. And so that's going to be the one that gets thrown. We've got to figure out where it was thrown to. On the other hand, if we look at these other ones here, those are our balls that are up in the air. And once a ball is up in the air, it's away from our hands. There's nothing we can do. The only thing we can do is wait for them to, to land. So they are just going to move a beat closer to landing. So in other words, if it was two beats away, now it's one beat away. If it was four beats away, now it's three beats away. And we say to ourselves, okay, we, we can see where the balls came from that were just moving closer to landing. And now we say, oh, look, there's one ball in this state that was unaccounted for. That's this ball right here. And so we say, oh, great. Well, what does that ball tell us? It tells us there's a ball that's scheduled to land in one, two, three, four five beats in the future. Aha! That means that if we're transitioning between these two states, this had to correspond to a throw of five. So, here we go. We know that's a throw of five. All right. Can you do the rest? I think you can. It's not too bad. So, again, uh, this is a great time. You can pause and... and uh, work on it and uh, you ready all right so here this would be a one this would be a two and this one would be a five and this one would be a two so that's the pattern there we go in our circle and you can see it one two five two five see that same pattern that's showing up here as well all right great so now we say okay that's great but how does this help us explore? How does this help us to find? Well, we need one more idea, which now says, hey, now we have this beautiful collection, ways to describe things. And we can say, well, let's look at sort of our collection of all possible states. And let's look at how they connect together. Now, to help us do this, we're gonna need something. We're gonna need a new tool. And what's our tool? Well, we're going to need what's called a graph. Now, you possibly have heard about graphs, and sometimes you hear of the idea of, well, the graph of a function. That's not the kind of graph we're talking about. So when we talk about graphs here, it's a, a slightly different meaning. So what a graph represents is how objects connect to each other. And so what we have is we'll have a collection of objects, and our objects, in this case, are the states. So we're going to put all our states down. And then we say, okay, our connections are, when can I go from one state to another state? Now, you can't always do it. What do I mean? So as an example, is it possible for us to go from this state 111 to 10101? Is that possible? Why or why not? Well, if it were possible, what would have to be true? Notice that there's a ball currently scheduled to land at three beats in the future, which would mean that if we were able to go from this state to that state, we'd have to have a ball landing two beats in the future, which isn't happening. So not every state can go directly to another state. So we say, okay, but let's see about which states can, and we'll connect them. So we'll, we'll draw an arrow like we've done here, like an arrow that connects states together. And so, what do we have? Well, now we have a bunch of states and the ways they connect together. And we'll call this the state graph. Okay, well, what does it look like? Aha, good question. Now, here's the answer. I happen to have it ready here. Here is our state graph. Now, a 
couple of comments here. What are our objects? Well, our objects are our states, and those are shown here in our green. So these are our possible states. Now, this is not all possible states, but this is just going to be the states that you're most likely to encounter. If you become a three ball juggler, you will spend most of your life looking in this diagram. So what do we have? So the green are our states, our blues are our blue arrows indicate, well, which states can we go between? So I can go from this state to that state, you know, that would be an arrow. And you can see that all the possible ones are, are shown here. Now, there's one more important idea, which is the numbers on the side of the arrows. And those correspond to say, hey, if I can transition from one state to another, that corresponds to a particular type of throw being made. What throw was made? Okay, so there, for example, if I want to go from 11001, I want to end up at 1101, that is a 2. All right. Now, your first reaction when you look at this might be like, this doesn't look like juggling. <laughs> we started with juggling. This doesn't look like juggling. Get us back to juggling. Okay, so I, I will tell you, it actually very much is juggling. Um, what we're doing here is storing all this beautiful information. So where do the juggling patterns come in? Well, what they do is they come in by saying, let's find a series of states that we can visit that start and end at the same state. Now, there's some very easy ones. See this little tiny arrow here? That starts and stops at the same state, one, one, one. And so whenever you have something that starts and stops at the same state, you just read the numbers on the arrows you used, and that will form a pattern. So here, this would be the pattern three. Great. Well, so that pattern, that's the one we start with. That's the, the three ball cascade. So this is three. So that, just that one little loop represents that pattern. Okay. Do we recognize some other ones? Well, yeah. See this one? Five, one. This says make a throw of five, make a throw of one. All right. Well, that's a pattern we've seen before. Five, one, five, one. Great. Beautiful. All right. Are there some other patterns? Here's another pattern, four, two, right? This says, do a throw of four, do a throw of two. That's a nice pattern. You know, two is just hold it, four, and it looks like this. So four, two, here you go. Nice and not too complicated. Whoop, shh, sudden gust of gravity there. All right, uh, what else can we have? Well, there's a couple of, of interesting ones. Here, if you do four, 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 zero. Okay, that's a one where we start and stop at the same place. Four, 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 zero. Now, what does that look like? Well, it kind of looks like what we just talked about. Remember how we had that four, two? The only difference is now this hand doesn't just hold it. It actually does a little bit of juggling as well. So, whoop. okay, let's try that again. That finger snapping corresponds to the zero. Okay, so that's four, 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 zero. All right, great. Now, a cool one. Well, they're all cool, right? All right, so here, this is kind of fun. If you follow along, four, four, one. Okay, that's a nice pattern. Four, four, one, four, four, one. That's stars and stops at the same place. So that's a juggling pattern. Now, this is a really cool juggling pattern. It's, it's very famous, especially in the, the math of juggling community. In some sense, even though juggling had happened for thousands of years, it wasn't until the mathematicians came in that they said, hey, there's this interesting pattern here that can be juggled. And uh, it, we call it 441. Now, what's going to happen? Well, what happens is you're going to have a ball that does this. It goes up, up, across, up, up, across. And that's it, right? That's one single ball. So nothing too fancy there. The only thing is we're not going to have one ball doing it. We're going to have three balls doing it all at the same time. So here we go. Four, four, one. There we go. Ha, ta -da. And of course, you know, there's lots and lots more patterns. So 
now you can discover new patterns. All you have to do is just so you know, pick a starting point, move along the arrows in the direction you gotta follow the direction of the arrows, you can't go backwards, and end up where you start. Keep track of which arrows you use, you've discovered a pattern. And if you go for a very long time, it's probably a pattern that's never been juggled by anybody else. You could be the first person to juggle it. And so we're discovering patterns. Ah, this is cool. This is cool. So uh, we can we can try it out, right? So let's suppose we start down here. Okay, so we just want to make sure we end back where we start. So uh, we're going to start in the lower left so we can go across. That's a five. Now you'll notice here is a zero. We, what happens when there's a zero at the front of our state? Well, that means that all the balls you threw are so high that in the next beat, nothing lands. And so you have no choice. Everything just moves closer to landing than what it currently is. Okay, well, that's actually not so bad. Okay, so we're gonna have to do a zero. All right, no problem. Then we can go up here, a four. And then, well, come across a zero. And then, okay, here's a five. Then we can swing over here. There's a three. And uh, let's see, we can do a one. Then we can go a four. And back down five. Five, zero, four, zero, five, three, one, four, five. Is it a pattern? Yes, it's guaranteed to be a pattern. Do I know how to juggle it? No, but we have an app for that. So there's a lot of beautiful apps online and you can even download them on your phone where you can actually type in these patterns. So these are called the site swap patterns and it will show you a little animated version of what it would look like when you juggled it. It's cool. And so you can look these up and try it out yourself. So this is a great way for us to go and discover new patterns. But we can also do more than just discover patterns. We can start to explore transitions between patterns. Now, let's go back to our three ball cascade. Do, 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 right? That's that one edge there. And then there's that three ball shower, which is going back and forth. Now notice, they're actually not right next to each other. So they're a little bit far apart. Well, what does that mean? Well, in terms of juggling, what that means is if I want to transition from the the cascade into the shower, there's a bit of a stutter. There's sort of like a beat where it's like, ah, rah, you know? So it, it's not a smooth transition. Now, okay, well, that's fine. Uh, it can also even help us find, well, what are some transitions to make? See, like here, it says, well, throw something really high, four, and then you can go into five, one. On the other hand, look at this. See our, our three ball cascade and the pattern of four, four, one, they both overlap in a state. What that means is you can do a three ball cascade and do a four, four, one and back in the three ball cascade without missing a single beat. And in fact, this is a way that some people use to practice throwing four, four, one. So now you can start to look at transitioning. How can I get from one pattern to another pattern? What can I do to get from here to there? All sorts of amazing things that we can do. And all of this information about patterns is being stored here in this beautiful graph that helps us understand and explore. And that's one of the great things about math is it helps us give a way to give a language of exploring patterns, of finding new patterns and seeing how they relate to each other. Now juggling has been greatly improved because of this. If you look at what juggling has happened in the last 40 years, which is about how long ago since the mathematicians really got involved and started introducing a lot of these ideas, it's gone tremendously more beautiful because we've been discovering new patterns that people can explore and try and investigate. This happens all the time. Mathematicians come in and we don't make things boring. We make things more beautiful because we give people powerful tools. Another example of this is origami. Origami is an ancient tradition but it's only been in the last couple of decades that the most amazing pieces have actually been able to be explored because they needed the tools of mathematics to help. 
So this is one of the wonderful reasons why it's great to do math. It's a wonderful way to make the world a beautiful place. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you keep checking out these other videos and I hope you have a great day. See you again. If you want to get started with juggling, it doesn't take very much. A lot of it just comes down to practice. And if you do a little bit of practice every day, five to 10 minutes, by the end of the week, you'll be able to juggle a really simple pattern. And so I wanted to sort of walk you through how you get started. Now, one good thing to do is to try to find objects to juggle. Now you can go buy juggling balls. Uh, I, I like bean bags because they have a tendency not to roll away, but you can oftentimes find things around the house. For example, if you have tennis balls, lacrosse balls, they work. Of course, be ready to chase them. You can uh, find other things. I don't recommend eggs. You know, eggs are a good weight, not a bad size, and they definitely won't roll away on you. <laughs> but one thing you'll quickly discover when you're starting to practice juggling is that you drop the balls a lot. In fact, uh, one of the ways you can tell if you're gonna be a great juggler is to do the following test. You just take a ball and you drop it, and if you enjoy the act of picking that ball up, you're going to be a fantastic juggler because you're going to be doing that a lot, especially at the beginning. You can also do things like roll up some socks in a nice tight ball and be creative. There's, there's lots of things that you can juggle. So how to begin? Well, I like the method. It was outlined uh, in the Klutz book of juggling. It's a very simple process. The first step is this. You throw a ball. You don't even worry about catching it. You just throw it. Now, you're probably like, perfect, I can master that one. Good, see, it's like already success, woohoo. Now, the second step is to actually catch the ball. So again, we're just gonna start with one ball and we're just gonna throw, catch, throw, catch, All right? That's what it is. Now, what are some things to keep in mind? Well, one thing you wanna keep in mind is that you wanna be consistent. So you don't want to have it where your right arm is throwing way high and your left arm is throwing low. You want to have the same height from both hands. And, uh, as, well, as they say among jugglers, uh, I'd give my right arm to be ambidextrous. You know, that, that ability where you don't have a strong arm or weak arm, both arms are equal. That's a really important skill to get in juggling. And it's not easy. You got to practice on it. Now, another thing you want to do is you want to make sure you're not throwing forward. That happens a lot, especially at the beginning. So you want to imagine that there's this plane here and that you're juggling inside of that plane. So everything stays nice and forward. You're not reaching with one arm. You're also not starting to spread your arms farther apart. Your arms by your side, relax, nothing stiff, and you're just consistently making one to another. And so, while it seems like this is an easy step, it's not so trivial. You want to keep practicing. Now, as you get better at this, another thing you want to do is get used to looking right at the top of the balls. In other words, where's the highest point? You want to look there. So you're not going to be following your hands. So you have to know where the ball is going. Because if you try to juggle like this, or worse yet, you know, try to follow every single ball, ugh, you're going to get a sore neck. So you're gonna just follow the top of the ball. Because when you see where the top of the ball is, that tells you where the ball is going. All right, now, the next thing for us to do, this would be our third step, is we're gonna go up by one ball. So, we now have two balls. Here's the idea, how we wanna start. We're gonna throw the first ball. And now as it starts to come down, so after it's reached its peak and it's starting to come down, at this point, we're gonna throw this other ball and so that it also does something similar. So here's what it should look like. Throw, throw, catch, catch, right? Throw, throw, catch, catch. Here's how it will probably happen the first time you, you do it. Throw, ah! Because there's a tendency to panic. It's like, ah, oh, there's a ball coming in, ah! and you chuck it far away. Don't do that, don't panic. And, uh, well, how do you not panic? Practice, just think about, throw, throw. Now, do it from, starting from both hands, right? Right, then left, left, then right. So this is, you wanna get comfortable here. This is probably the hardest part. But the nice thing is, once you have this, 
you're basically through the hardest part. So once you're comfortable, throw, 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 throw. Then we're going to add in our last balls. We're going to go over three balls. And the thing is, now instead of doing it two times, we do a throw, throw, we're going to do throw, 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 stop, right? Throw, 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 stop. And throw, 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 stop. Okay, if you can do that, add in a fourth one. Okay, add in a fifth one. And now go for a while and stop. I encourage you to, to train yourself to actually stop under control. And it's okay if, you know, the pattern is not smooth at first. It will get smooth. Juggling like so many things in life, the more you practice, the better you get. And you'll think back and say, wow, why did I struggle so much at the start? Well, you had to go through a learning process. It's the same with math. You know, you don't have a math gene. You either put in the time and you get better at it or you don't. And so keep, keep working. You can get better. You can do better. All right. Thanks. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Good luck. And uh, if you want to do more than just this basic pattern, there are so many videos online. And the great thing is jugglers like to share. And so if you can find a local community of jugglers, they would love to help you improve. So reach out and uh, as always, have a ball.